All right, Schlagmeister fans, continuing with the uh, Leave it to Beaver Blu-ray box set. We're going to start with Season 5, and let's check it out. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 1, Wally Goes Steady. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Seeing so much of one another? Oh, you have a boy who plays with Beaver, huh? Oh, no, Ward. No, I'm talking about your Wally and my Evelyn. You know, going steady. They make a nice couple, don't they? I think she was the one that he took to the Rutherford party, but that doesn't sound like any serious romance. Well, there must be more going on than we know about. After all, when a complete stranger comes up and introduces himself to you as your son's future father-in-law, it makes you a little curious. It's the same girl. <laughs> well, you've been seeing quite a lot over that, haven't you? Well, well, sure, Dad. She's in all my classes. Except Jim. <laughs> Has Wally ever mentioned Evelyn to you? Hey, yeah, I did once, Mom. When he got home to take her to the movie set night, he said he got her in as a junior. <laughs> well, Mom said you were getting serious about that, Evelyn. And now you got you on like you're crazy, and you're going out with married people. Well, what about it? We've been having fun together ever since we were brothers. And I hadn't figured on you getting married until I was finished playing with you. Be sure you get Evelyn home early, son. And uh, remember, Tom and Judy are three years older than you are. Yeah, I know. But they don't act that way when you're with them. <laughs> uh, do you think Maris or Mantle will hit 60 home runs this year? Well, I really haven't given it much thought, Wally. Yeah, I guess you've been pretty busy being married. <laughs> yes. Mom, you didn't get half the things I told you to when I called. I couldn't. The market wouldn't cash my check. Uh, aren't these lamps pretty, Wally? Uh, they're a wedding present from my Uncle Harry. Oh, yeah, their apartment's okay and everything, but... Well, Judy was running around with all kinds of little things in her hair, and, and one of the chairs is broken, and then they started yelling at each other, and, and they have to borrow money from Judy's father, and... Yeah, what was all that for? Well, son, I think your mother was a little worried about you. Yes, I was afraid your spending the evening with the Hendersons would give you ideas. <laughs> well, it gave me some ideas, all right. Especially since our kids are starting to see so much of one another. You know, you're Roger and my Evelyn sure make a cute couple. Oh, I hadn't thought much about it. Yeah, with kids the way they are these days, you and I might just find ourselves buying striped trousers and cutaway coats. <laughs> it's sort of a shock to me. My boy's just a youngster. I don't know exactly what to do. Oh, it's quite a problem, all right. But if he's ever invited over to the Hendersons, let him go. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode two, No Time for Babysitters. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Wondered if you'd mind staying home with a beaver on Friday night. You mean this Friday night? Yes, your father and I are going to be at the McBride's all evening. We're afraid we might get home late and we don't want to leave Beaver here alone. Joan, Beaver's in the sixth grade now. Don't you think he's old enough to stay by himself? No, Ward, I don't. You know, we'd probably be home late and Wally's going to a high school dance. Oh, that's all right, Dad. I can find plenty of stuff to do. That's not what we were thinking of. Oh, I'll bet you were thinking of the old days when I was a little kid and you used to have to hire a babysitter every time you went out. Mom and my dad and my brother are going to be gone practically all night and I'm going to stay home alone. Like fun you are. He'll be alone with a babysitter. Oh, yeah, I'm not having any babysitter. You are, too. Yes, he is, but I'm afraid he's not in a very good mood. I just got through telling him that we'd lined up Mrs. Walker's niece, Judy, to babysit with him tonight. Golly, Mom, wasn't that kind of a dirty trick to play on the beaver? Uh, Judy, this is Beaver. Hi, Beaver. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I uh, guess we'd better be going. Guess it's not your fault. Well, Mom and Dad's fault. Oh, I guess you think you're too old to have a babysitter. Way too old. That's kid stuff. Just remember something your mother wanted me to do for her in the kitchen. I'll go take care of it. What took you so long, Beef? Wouldn't your babysitter let you come to the door? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe years along. You want to go home, Rich? 
Yeah, let's go. See ya, Bee. Okay, see ya. Boy, what a creepy kid. Brings us all the way over here for nothing. <laughs> Beaver, would you mind playing checkers with me? I'd love to, Beaver. You know something, Judy? What? Having a babysitter like you almost makes me wish I was a baby. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 3, Wally's Car. Starring Barbara Billingsley. It's a car. Wally, you mean to tell me you went out and bought a car without even bothering to ask my permission? Well, I... I was gonna try to break it to you a little easier than that. Is it okay if I sit in your car? <laughs> look, uh, look, why don't you wait till a little later, huh? No, I'd better do it now. You might not have the car later. <laughs> I want you to get rid of this car right now before it causes a lot of trouble. Well, okay, Dad, if I have to. But would you give me a couple of days so I can sell it and get my money back? Ward! Honey, we should be leaving now. Yes, dear, I know we should, but how? What? Wally's got my car blocked, and his, his hand-painted motor vehicle won't move. Oh, Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Wally, what are you doing? Why, do you know that it's almost midnight? <laughs> Hi, Mom. Did you have a nice time at the party? Wally? Beaver? You get up from there right now and get upstairs to bed. Hey, I know. If that jewel guy could find somebody flaky enough to buy it, I could do the same thing. Good day. Mrs. Ashby? She lives down the street with a well-groomed yard and the beautiful flowers. No jalopy in her front lawn. Hey, Wally, I could use this horn for my car. Want to sell it? Well, I don't know. How much you give me for it? Buck. Take it or leave it. Hey, Wally, if you're selling stuff, I can use the taillight in the rearview mirror. $37.50. Yeah, and you only paid $25 to begin with. See, I didn't know a loose car could be worth more than a tight car. Hey, you know, that might not be a bad business to get into. Sounded like a good Joe on the phone, so I took your word. Well, believe me, Mr. Garvey, I had no idea. Hmm. All the parts are there, he says. How much would you charge to haul this thing away from here? Oh, uh, ten dollars? Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> See, here you go. Okay, son, I'll take care of it. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 4, Beaver's Birthday. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Beaver was having a birthday party Saturday. Well, when he saw the favorite hats, he decided he was too big to have a birthday party. Oh. Well, I was sort of looking forward to having a bunch of his friends drip their ice cream on our carpet and spill their punch on our furniture. You said you didn't want to have a party. Yeah, but that's all I said I didn't want to have. <laughs> Beaver, if you're worried about your birthday present, we're just waiting until your father comes down so he can enjoy it, too. Here's a little something from your mother and me. Hey, how little of something is it? Theodore Cleaver, $10. Your father and I knew you were getting too big for toys, and so we thought this would be a more practical gift. Now I can go out and buy a whole lot of junk. Beaver, before you go out and buy a whole lot of junk right away, you know what I'd do with that money if I were you? Oh, you're gonna make me put it in the bank? I had to put my Christmas money in the bank. They said I'll get my bank book with my own name on it. I already got a bank book with my own name on it. Sure, but if you look inside, you'll see your pop's name right under your name to keep you from having fun with it. Hey, look! Someone must have shoved it under your door. What is it? It says, Mr. Theodore Cleaver. Hey, that's me! It says they delivered a registered letter, but there was nobody here. Happy birthday, Beaver. Rather than send you something that you couldn't use, I thought I'd send you money so you could buy something that you really wanted. Uncle Billy. Boy, Beaver, that's neat. Come on, now you can get that model with a gasoline engine. You want to go inside and look at it? What for? I'm not going to buy it. Well, we could go inside and look at stuff, and if the guy tells us to beat it, you can show him the $10, and he'll have to be nice to us. <laughs> Boy, Beaver, that's the neatest racing car I ever saw. Hey, and you even have enough money left over to get some sodas. 
Gee, Gilbert, I didn't mean to buy it. it. Just happened on me. Well, where'd you get it? Um, Gilbert gave it to me. <laughs> oh, birthday present? Well, he gave it to me today, and today is my birthday. <laughs> That's quite a nice gift. Hey, the race car. Where'd you get it? Gilbert gave it to me. Ah, don't give me that bunk. How do you know it's bunk? Well, in the first place, Gilbert's too cheap to give you anything like that. In the second place, that's the same car you've been yapping about for the past week. Well, Beaver only got five presents, and he's writing six notes. Yeah, well, maybe he uh, made some sort of a mistake or something. Uncle Billy! He's writing... The next thing I knew, I was coming out of the store with the model in my hands. Well, Beaver, Uncle Billy sent you the money to buy a present with. I'm sure if you'd come to your mother or me, we'd have let you do it. You mean I went through all that sneaky stuff for nothing? <laughs> yes, sir. I think you should tell Gilbert that his idea didn't work. Oh, well, I'm going to tell him, all right, Dad. And I think I'll tell him while I'm sitting on him. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 5, Beaver's Cat Problem. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Where'd you find him? Oh, I didn't find him. He found me. When I came home from school, he was sitting on the porch waiting for me. <laughs> hey, look it. He's washing himself. Boy, if we washed ourselves like that, well, we get yelled at. Oh, hello, Mrs. Prentice. Have we what? Oh, uh, no, I'm afraid not. Well, I'm sure he'll turn up. He was just walking around and he got lost. Why, Bootsy, you're all dusty. Yeah, he, uh, he chased a ball under our bed. <laughs> How come I'm lucky I didn't feed him? Well, everyone knows that if you feed a cat, he's bound to come back. Well, the first thing you know, you can't get rid of him. <laughs> hey, Bootsy, what are you doing here? You know what it's doing here? What's another free handout? Well, I must be getting forgetful. I put an empty milk bottle in the refrigerator. <laughs> oh, I am. Uh, I guess I did it, Mom. Greedy old thing. Eating at other people's houses. I don't want you to ever do a thing like that again. Do you understand, Bootsy Bootsy? Well, they wouldn't want me to take anything. Nonsense. You went to a lot of trouble. Well, yes, but I got the money for the trouble I went to yesterday. Now, now, Beaver, I insist. Well, no, Mrs. Prentice, I... <laughs> well, okay. She probably thinks Beaver's working a racket to get a dollar out of her each time. Hey, we just can't have Bootsy coming over here every day and night. Well, it's quite a problem. How do you discourage a cat that likes your home better than he does his own? Boy, Gilbert, your dog looks like a real cat scare, all right. <laughs> sure, he's real me. Hey, here comes Bootsy. <laughs> What's he up to? Search me, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I did it again. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 6, Wally's Weekend Job. Starring Barbara Billingsley. I saw Beaver out front. He tells me Wally's gone down to see about that uh, part-time job at the soda fountain. Yes, Mr. Gibson, the owner's making his decision today. You know, I think Wally has a very good chance to get it. What? Oh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, what can I do for you, mister? <laughs> Beaver, stop your giggling. Okay, but don't call me mister. Where's the whipped cream? <laughs> Look, Wally, they got rules against threatening the customers. Yeah, but they don't have any rules against the guy slugging his brother. Oh, yeah, help! He's killing me! He's killing me! Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Rocky Road, peach, maple, walnut, black raspberry, mocha, pecan, banana, eggnog, peppermint, and pistachio. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let me think it over, and I'll get back to you, boy. Say, Jan, I thought you were on a diet. We all are. A diet of Wally Cleaver. <laughs> I think those girls were making sport of us. It's all because of that Wally. The whole thing is his fault. Getting that job. Yeah. Not only has he got the neatest job in town, he's got all the girls. I just wouldn't feel right spying on him his first night. When would you feel right about spying on him? 
Maybe tomorrow night? Come on, Molly. Hey, wait. Wait a minute, you guys. How about the check? What check? You were supposed to pay? Beave. You're the guy who said to come down here and get neat soda off your brother. Oh, I was one. <laughs> Mr. Rogers? I know you're open until 8 o'clock tonight, and I was wondering if you could send your fountain boy, Wally Cleaver, by our place with some ice cream on his way home. It was right around the corner from Wally Cleaver? I'm Julie Bay Helen. It's Wally Cleaver. Hi, Wally. Hi. Why, Wally Cleaver, what are you doing here? Well, I, uh, I just dropped... Girls, girls, Wally's here. Wally Cleaver's here. What's he doing here? Oh, Daddy, I I'm warned just... you, Mary Ellen, about boys showing up around here. Oh. But, sir... Now, you just move on and fast. Oh, but, sir, uh, you see ice cream... Ice cream? I didn't order any ice cream, and you know it. <laughs> I advise you to fix you young puss pull when these girls are all fine. Hi, Lumpy. Um, I just wanted to ask you something. Do you really like pistachio? Um... Well, yeah, sure, it's my favorite. Well, good. <laughs> You're a good kid. You owe me $3.60, too. Hello, Mr. Cleaver. Episode 7, Beaver Takes a Drive. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Was on your way over to the Birch. Could you drop me off at the park? Yeah, Dad, and while you're doing that, could you drop me off at Gilbert's? We're not taking our car, boys. The Tolos are coming by to pick us up. Oh, well then could you drop us off now? Hey, Gilbert, I'll just come over to your house like I said. Yeah, but I told my dad you were coming over, and he said, why don't I go over to Beavers for a change? So I came over here. Hey, Gilbert, what? Well, I got an idea. Let's pretend we're old people, and we're going to take our kids for a ride in the car. Should have turned at that last corner. Well, I couldn't. I was in the wrong lane. Oh, you're always in the wrong lane when you're supposed to turn. Well, you should have told me. You know, Beaver, you sound just like my father. for driving. Well, Wally, you don't have a driver's license. That's why I got the ticket. <laughs> Wally, this is hard to believe. Wally, somebody must have driven it out. Yeah, I, uh, I guess somebody must have. <laughs> I guess I'm the somebody. Beaver, <laughs> you drove your father's car? Is this hotel involved in the violation? Oh, yes, ma'am. If it wasn't for me, none of us would be here. Gilbert is uh, Beaver's friend, uh, that is Theodore's friend. It seems the two boys were playing in the car, and... Thank you very much, Mr. Cleaver, but I'd prefer the boy answer his own questions. Mr. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll let you off this time, Wally, with a warning. But I don't want to see you in here again. Oh, no, sir. I don't want to see you again either, sir. <laughs> Wally, you're gonna wash the car. Oh, fine, right ahead. But, Dad, oh, we have to have you to drive it out of the garage. Well, do I have to do it now? Well, Wally can take the brake off and we can push it out. Good, good, you do that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'll back it out myself. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 8 Wally's Big Bait. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Oh, man. What's wrong with it being the 16th? Well, this is the week we have a school dance on Saturday night. Except the guys from Mayfield are supposed to take the girls from Riverside. And the guys from Riverside are supposed to take the girls from Mayfield. Not that easy, Mom. Mrs. Mulligan's got the whole thing worked out. Today at school, they're going to put all the girls from Riverside in a bowl, and the guys...
guys are going to pick their names out and see who they get stuck with. <laughs> what about it? Well, you being my best friend, I thought maybe we could switch. You take the girl I drew out of the ball, and I'll take Marjorie. You're not backing out now. She looks great, but you offered me a deal, and I'm accepting it. No, I still can't picture Wally getting the best of Eddie in a deal. It just isn't natural. Or Wally showed me the picture of the girl in the yearbook. She's really a very lovely-looking girl. Well, it was awfully nice meeting you, Wally. Well, it was nice meeting you, too. <laughs> down to the malt shop. He's meeting the girl he's taking to the dance Saturday. Oh? <laughs> well, actually, I should be running along. But if you have no objections, Mrs. Cleaver, well, I'll just run up and get that book. Look, Sam, how was I supposed to know she was a couple of feet taller than you? Well, you met her, didn't you? Ooh, all right. Suppose I did. Suppose I did. She could have grown since then, couldn't she? In two months. Well, how does he expect to get out of it? Maybe you'll try the same kind of excuse you used to use when you wanted to ditch a girl. What? Well, won't have my son acting like that. <laughs> Gee, that's great. Uh, hello? Could I please speak to Wally Cleaver? This is his brother, and I have a very important message for him. Yeah? Beaver says to tell you your mother's flu is getting worse, and she has a temperature of 104. <laughs> what? And he says to tell your girl that you can't stay, and you better get home before things get any worse. Wait, I'm surprised at you. Look, Gail. Uh... My, my mother's not really sick. My kid brother's just giving me an excuse to leave the dance early. Oh. Well, what I mean is, is well, if, if, I, uh, if I wanted to leave the dance early, this way I could leave the dance early. But, but I don't want to leave early. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 9, Beaver's Ice Skates. Starring Barbara Billingsley. What was you want to ask me, Beaver? Well, you see, Dad, all the guys are going ice skating at the ice skating rink. And they're all buying ten dollars season tickets. And I want to know if I can have six dollars to buy a ten dollars season ticket. Oh no, Mom! I think I can take the money out of my bank account. <laughs> How about it, Dad? Mom? Well, Beaver, it's your money. If you want to spend it on ice skates, so I guess that's up to you. you mean our imported English racers? Yes, sir. Oh, they're a real bargain at twelve ninety-five. I, I only hope we have a pair left. Oh, I hope so, too. I already told all the guys I was getting them. What are the sixes on these skates? What are they? What about the sevens? What are those two? Also the eights. Got nothing left but the nines on up. What's the matter? You trip? She I don't know. I feel off a bit. I can't stand up. <laughs> Maybe they feel away because they're new. Sure, you gotta break them in. Beaver, what are you doing in a library? Well, I'm reading until it's time to go home for supper. Yeah, but you're supposed to be skating. I can't go skating. On account of these new crummy skates I bought. Well, just take them back to the store and we'll, uh, we'll either get them changed or get your money back. You think they'll do that, Wally? Sure they will. Look, the only reason they took advantage of you is because you're a kid. I'm not going to shove guys my age around. Wobble every time I put them on. <laughs> Whenever you wobble, you wobble the sides against the floor. You see? You mean you're not going to exchange them for a pair of his size? Well, they are his size. Now, look, I've been selling shoes for years. Are you sure Beaver's been skating every day? Of course. He comes home late every day with his skates around his neck. Listen to this. Due to a broken pipe in the refrigeration system, the Ice Palace was compelled to close its doors yesterday. You know those new skates I bought, Dad? 
Well, I can't wear them on account of they're way too big for me. But I didn't want to tell you, so you'd yell at me for buying myself and wasting my money. The salesman had no right to sell you skates that are way too big for you, and I'm not going to let him get away with it. But gee, Dad, are you going to clobber him? Well, I don't think I'll have to clobber him, but I am going to see that you get your money back or a decent pair of skates. That's twelve dollars and ninety-five cents. Now you've got all your money back. Did you have any trouble, Dad? No, not much. I had to threaten to go to the Better Business Bureau if he didn't give us our money back. Leave it to Beaver. Episode ten: Weekend Invitation, starring Barbara Billingsley. My radio left to be fixed. I thought they might uh, want it over the weekend. Oh, fine. I think Beaver will be here, but Wally's invited away for the weekend. Well, don't tell me the Haskells have asked him over to be a good influence on Eddie again. <laughs> no, some boy by the name of Scott asked him. Well, can I speak to one of his parents? Hey, Scott, my dad wants to speak to one of your parents. They're not here. Oh. Hey, Dad, his parents aren't home. Well, hey, Wally, listen, there's nobody here for your old man to talk to. <laughs> this is not Wally, son. This is his uh, old man. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, excuse me, sir. I, I'm really very sorry. Ward, I don't like the sound of this. I think you gave your permission too soon. I know, dear, but I was more or less trapped. The other boys all had permission to go, and Wally was set on it. Hey, Scott, won't your mom object to cooking that kind of junk? How could she object? She's not going to be there. Oh, you mean, you mean your mom's not going to be there? Huh? No, she and Pop are flying to Chicago tonight on business. Boy, imagine being up at the lake with no wardens around. Funny to say, you know something, Dad? There weren't any parents up there. And that way you'll be telling the truth and you won't spoil your weekend. <laughs> you know something, Beaver? You're not such a little kid as I thought you were. It's uh, just that you and June have put me in a bit of a spot by giving your permission. Put you in a spot, Fred? Yes, it's uh, it seems a little surprising that you'd allow Wally to go away for a weekend with no adult supervision. It, well, it just doesn't sound like you parent-wise. There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Oh? Yeah, there's uh, there's something that I think you and Mom ought to know. Um, Scott's parents aren't going to be up at the lake. I'm sorry, but we've decided it would be unwise to let you go on the trip. Ah, oh, Dad. Wally, we hate to do this to you, but we honestly feel it's for the best. Hey, if you want, I could call our guys up and tell them you died or something. <laughs> nah, that's no good. I have to go to school Monday. How could I show up if I was dead? Coach <laughs> won't let me. Oh, no. Now, look, Wally. Three guys have chickened out already. I mean, I thought you were one guy that knew how to handle his parents. Well, what's the strain? My father just doesn't want me going, that's all. Oh, when I get there, my pop's gonna kill me. <laughs> some weekend this is gonna be well maybe some of the other guys can go no not with the parents on the phone talking to each other leave it to beaver episode 11 beaver's english test starring barbara billingsley dear parent this is to inform you that your son or daughter theodore is doing below average work in english Unless a noticeable improvement is shown, he or she will receive an unsatisfactory mark in this subject on the next report card. We're always very good in school, especially in English. Well, yeah, I know, Dad. But up to now, we haven't been worried about English. We've been too busy learning how to read and write. The early bird catches the worm. We arrived early. Oh. Now I forgot the questions. <laughs> oh, really, Gilbert? He's not home. He had to go out. I'm supposed to be helping the beaver. Oh, that's okay. Then you can help me, too. I don't mind that you're just a kid. And when I wait a minute, Kilbert, I got enough trouble trying to help the beaver. Look, you guys, I got studying on my own to do. Here, uh, here I got an old English test that I took when I was in the sixth grade. Why don't you guys look over the questions and answers? It might do you some good. Hey, John and Ted are hiking again. Yeah, and Joe's taking the airplane. Gee, this is the same test we memorized last night. How could a thing like this happen? Who cares? Pipe down and start writing. I want to tell you how pleased I am with the tremendous improvements you've made in English. You both got a 96 on the test. Congratulations. Gee, thanks, Mr. Blair. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mr. Blair. You happy about it? Why, sure. That's one of the best marks I ever got. Yeah. But do you think your dad would be happy about it if he knew you looked at Wally's old test? 
book with a mark like that, he's not going to ask any questions. That's wonderful. Now, you see, Beaver, what you can do when you really buckle down. Beaver? Your father and I both knew what you could do if you just apply yourself. We're very proud of you, son. And then when we got there, we found out it was the same test of wine you gave me last night. I guess that was cheating, huh, Dad? Well, Beaver, under the circumstances, I'm not sure we could exactly call it cheating. I think he's gone. I'm going to tell Mr. Blair. Now, wait a minute, Beaver. You can't go in there and tell Mr. Blair. Well, why not? Because I'm your best friend, and I can't let you go in there and get into a whole mess of trouble. It's a free country. I can tell him if I want to. What's this? Well, I mean, I did get a 96, but I really didn't get one. On a kind of, I looked at one of my brother's old tests the night before, and it was the same test. And did his father find out he looked at my test? Well, no, but he's making him stay home every night and study like crazy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He said if he got a 96 once, he can get it all the time. And if he doesn't, he's really going to clobber it. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 12, Wally's Chauffeur. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, Wally, how you getting to the dance? Oh, Lumpy Rutherford's taking a bunch of us guys in his car. How much of a bunch? Well, I think there'll be about eight of us. Is Dad letting you do that? Four couples in one car? Wally, that's disgraceful. Gee, Mom, Lumpy had that man in the front seat coming home from the football game. <laughs> Wally, look, you can't expect Evelyn to ride in a car with six other people. Well, I'm sorry, Wally, but I think between now and next Saturday, you'd better find another way to go to the dance. That's too many people in one car. And I happen to know Lumpy's had two or three tickets. But, Wally, looks like you're going to be stuck to have Dad driving to the dance. Boy, a guy my age who's got his own rented dinner jacket and everything can't have his daddy driving him to a country club dance. Why, if Lumpy and all the guys saw me getting out of my dad's car, I'd just about die. Well, I came over here to tell you that due to unavoidable circumstances, we're not going to be able to go to the dance in Lumpy's car. Oh, he didn't take it apart again. <laughs> Such a grown-up affair and everything, and... Since I do have my driver's license now, could I borrow the car? No, Evelyn. Oh, please. Well, as long as it's the Cleaver boy, all right. Holy mackerel. That's Evelyn. Yeah, and there's nobody else in the car. Oh, no. She's driving us to the dance. I picture a girl driving me up in front of the country club with, with all the guys standing there laughing and sneering. Golly, Dad, I'd rather walk into the ballroom in my underwear. And you're not letting her down at the last minute. Now, you're going to take this dinner jacket downstairs, you're going to drive to the dance with that girl, and you're going to have a good time. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Cinderella, who's driving your pumpkin? What happened, Wally? Did they make you queen for a day? What's the matter, Wally? Wouldn't Daddy let you drive? Knock it off, you guys. Don't pay any attention to them, Wally. Are you going to get that heap out of here or not? Gee, Wally, there's plenty of room. I'm sure Evelyn could horse her car out of here. Look, Lumpy, if you don't get that hunk of junk out of here right now, I'm going to clobber you. Of course, Wallace. What did I do with that key? There's an ordinance against parking in a red zone. Let me see your license. While I'm writing this ticket, move your car. Let the young lady get out. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Evelyn, it looks like Lumpy's gonna be tied up here a while. Can Sue and I ride with you? Sure, hop in. Can we have a lift, too, Evelyn? Sure, why not? Hey, how about Marge and me? Can we go, too? Mm -hmm. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 13, Beaver's First Date. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Wow, well, Beaver, did you have a good time with all your nice little friends at dancing school? Yes, yeah, son, did you learn some interesting new steps today? Gee, Mom and Dad, you don't have to tell me all that happy stuff. I really had a good time. I liked it because of a girl. A girl? Not so loud, Wally. Wow, Beaver. I never thought I'd ever hear you say that in a million years. No special occasion. It's just so when a when a guy takes a girl out for the first time, he wants to look nice. You're gonna take out a girl? Look, why don't you say, um, uh, it was nice meeting her and uh, and that it was a very pretty dress that she was wearing. Aw, uh, cut it out, Wally. I couldn't talk about a girl's dress, even on the telephone. <laughs> as long as they're making us do that, I figured I might as well ask you. <laughs> yeah? Well, okay. Goodbye. Fever, what's the matter with you? That's no way to invite a girl to a dance. 
Maybe it's not, but she said she'd go. <laughs> The crummiest dancer I ever saw. <laughs> she thinks instead of having adults, it would be nice to have former students like Wally and Clarence Rutherford to act as chaperones. She thinks the younger children like me would feel less self-conscious. Well, I... Mom first asked you about being a chaperone, you squawked all over the place. How come all of a sudden you changed your mind? Well, because Dad gave me a lecture about family responsibility and five dollars. Oh. Dad she knows how to talk to kids, doesn't he? Well, you've been to a lot of dances since then. You know how to talk to girls just like they were fellas. Look, Beaver, tonight all you have to do is watch me and do what I do. That's a good idea. I'll do everything you do. Hi, Beaver. Hi, Betsy. Uh, this is my brother, Wally. He's older than I am. How do you do, Wally? Hello, Betsy. Uh, these are for you. They're beautiful flowers. Dipper. Okay. Beaver! <laughs> Don't drink out of it. Here. Well, you didn't expect me to dance every dance just with you, did you, Beaver? No, I don't guess so. But what am I supposed to do with your dancing? I'd feel funny just standing around doing nothing. Oh, Beaver, you're silly. Come on, guys, let's go. Maybe we can even take our ties off. <laughs> hey, Beach, when you were out there dancing with that Betsy before, you had a look on your face like you were almost liking it. <laughs> Gee, Richard, you know me better than that, don't you? <laughs> anyway, I don't think any girl's worth going through all the stuff I went through tonight. <laughs> well, I guess I felt that way when I was your age, too. You did? I'd get over it. Well, you, you just have to keep going to these dances and things until you get used to it. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 14, Ward's Golf Clubs. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, golf balls. Where'd you get them? I found them. Where? Over by the driving range. You guys are always hitting them over that big wire fence. You sure found a lot of them. Yeah. I would have found more, but a guy came and chased me away while I was finding them. Look what I did to my best driver. Oh, yeah, it fixed? No, nah, it wouldn't be worth it. Well, Sam Snead always said there'd be days like this. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt just to borrow one for a few minutes. Here's a neat looking one. That's a driver. That's the one you use to hit the ball in the sand when you start off. <laughs> and there it goes! Oh, Gilbert, the ball's still there. Then what went into the bushes? <laughs> All of a sudden it just busted. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You better tell Dad right away. But he won't be playing golf till way next Saturday. I want to pick the best time. <laughs> Look, Beaver, when you do something this bad, there is no best time. Happen to have respect for other people's possessions. Now, I don't place many restrictions on you boys, but there's one thing I do ask, and that is that you leave my things alone. Boy, Beaver, you still should have told him. How could I have the way he balled you up for wearing his shirt? And how come he had to pick a time when I was in trouble to wear one of his shirts? <laughs> I'm gonna buy something on time payments. How much would he have to start with? Time payments, eh? Well, the first payment is usually 30%. 30% of what the guy's got? No, 30%. I had to have at least $5 down. Well, do you think you could do it for at least $3 down? Well, I guess I could for you. Uh, how long do you want to pay it off? Would five years be okay? Peter, it's you. Yeah, Mom, it's me. Why are you walking like that? Oh, well, uh, I was just pretending I was a one-legged pirate, and I'm going upstairs to walk the plank. <laughs> Last Saturday, when I came home from playing golf, you saw me wiggle this head, didn't you? Yes, Ward. Why? Oh, nothing. When you thought you'd broken the club, why didn't you come to me and tell me right away? Oh, well, I was going to, Dad. But then you started bawling out Wally for wearing one of your shirts. And if you got that mad about a shirt, I didn't want to see what was going to happen about a golf club. <laughs> Am I still going to have to keep paying for the golf club? No, oh, Beaver, I'll take care of that, and I'll give you your three dollars back. But the next time Gilbert comes over here with a box full of golf balls, what are you going to do? Punch him in the nose. <laughs>
Leave it to Beaver. Episode 15, Farewell to Penny. Starring Barbara Billingsley. You might as well throw this one away, Mom. Well, now, why wouldn't you want to go to a party at school for Penny Woods? Well, in the first place, because she's a girl. In the second place, because Beaver says she's just about the creepiest girl in the whole school. Why didn't you say it in class? Because of that goofy Penny. She put a hex on me with her creepy face. How can a guy remember presidents when he's looking at a zombie? <laughs> what did you say about my face? If I left anyone out. Mother! How can you do this to me? My whole party is ruined! How is your whole party ruined? You invited that awful, horrible Beaver Cleaver. I can't have her father's job. My dad said he either got promoted or fired. <laughs> well, I didn't realize that this was a farewell party. Are you... Well, gee, Wally. Penny's been calling me creepy and stupid ever since we were little kids. And now that she's not going to be around to bother me anymore, I'm going to sort of miss her. Farewell to Grant Avenue Elementary School, where our teachers taught us the golden rule. Parting from my classmates, dear, brings to my eye a tender tear. When I move away to other places, I'll never forget your smiling faces. Well, I I'm kind of sorry about what I said yesterday. Well, about you having a creepy face and everything. Oh, are you, Beaver? Well, yeah. Your face isn't any creepier than any of the other girls in our class. <laughs> I'm cute, Beaver. Well, gee, I wouldn't say that to any girl. But as long as you're leaving for good, I guess I am going to miss you. A little or a lot? A lot. Ward, isn't it cute? Now that Penny's moving away, Beaver actually likes her. Well, I wouldn't get carried away, dear. I don't think a pencil box is exactly a symbol of eternal romance. Oh, she's not going to move. Sure she's going to move. She's moving to Bellport and everything. No, she's not. Angela Valentine told me that after the party, Penny made a big fuss at home. And her parents are letting her live here with her grandparents till the end of school. Well, I really didn't mean it. Oh, you didn't? Well, I didn't mean anything I said either, you creepy little rat. Well, I didn't mean it any more than you didn't mean it, you funny little spook. Oh, you stupid little goof. Give me back my pencil box. Eh, 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 eh. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 16, Beaver the Bunny. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Gosh, what is that? It's Beaver's costume for the school pageant. Dear, I guarantee you no one will talk my son into wearing that. Sorry, dear. You already have. I didn't volunteer to be a crummy bunny. Well, I wanted to be a zebra or a snake or something like that. But I was at the end of the line, and by the time they got to me, all the good things were taken off. School isn't interested in you and your bunny suit. Sure they are, Dad. I'm going to be the funniest looking kid in the whole pageant in that crazy bunny suit. Look, Beaver, you're worried about nothing. With all those creepy costumes, the laughs are going to be pretty well divided up. Uh, dear, I'm going to be stuck down here at the office for a while. Well, honey, do you know how long you're going to be? We're supposed to have Beaver at the school 45 minutes early. Well, I'll tell you to play safe. I think you'd better get someone else to take him to school, and then we'll join him later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this what I have to haul to school? <laughs> Cut it out, Lumpy. Mm. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, look, why don't you walk up to Grand Avenue and take the bus? <laughs> Gee, Wally, I'm not getting on a bus in a bunny costume. Hey, I'm a crazy rabbit. <laughs> Can do to help with him? Yes, there is. You can tell me where he is. He isn't here. He isn't here? I specifically told all the children to be here 45 minutes early. Gee, that's funny. He should be here by now. I'm in a phone booth and there's some dogs barking. <laughs> dogs in a phone booth? Oh, no, sir. They're not in the phone booth. They're outside. They're barking because they think I'm a rabbit. Mr. Peter, have you seen Theodore? No, isn't he here? Well, I left the house some time ago. 
Dear, I never should have let him go with Clarence. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cleaver. Clarence, have you seen Beaver any place? Yeah, Wally and I drove around looking for him, and we just found him out front. Getting out of a police car. A police car? Yeah, Wally's bringing him in now. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 17, Beaver's Electric Trains. Starring Barbara Billingsley. What was Beaver's reaction to giving his trains away? Well, I haven't mentioned it to him yet. He's upstairs, but, well, he hasn't even looked at those trains for over two years. I'm sure he won't mind giving away something he never uses anymore. Tell me how hard Dad works for his money and how expensive the trains were and how I at least should show my appreciation by playing with them once in a while. <laughs> Gee, Mom. I'm too big a guy to be playing with trains. You mean you don't mind if I give them away? Oh, you're gonna give them away? What a baby are you playing with a little choo-choo train? Well, I'm not playing with it. I'm just getting it ready to give it away. Oh, sure, you're giving them away. Oh, well, sure I am. My mom was giving it to that Jimmy Batson kid. That's good, because the next thing you'd be playing with teddy bears. What's the matter with you guys? A little flaky or something? <laughs> oh, hi, Wally. Hey, uh... Hey, I thought playing with trains was supposed to be kid stuff, Beaver. Sure it's kid stuff, but it's also a lot of fun stuff. I could go down and tell Dad that I wanted to keep my trains. Well, what's wrong with tonight? Well, you know how Dad is, Wally. Tonight he's got his mind made up that I'm going to give the trains away. But if I wait till tomorrow night, maybe his mind won't be so made up. Wouldn't it be neat if a guy could stay a kid all his life? Uh, you'd never get away with that. But you know, when you get real old, you have what they call a second childhood. No fooling? Boy, at least I got something to look forward to. Oh, well, I guess that's why I haven't seen you. <laughs> Georgia came over to get Beaver's trains. Oh, yeah, the, the trains. Wally, would you go and get them for me? And Georgia, would you excuse me? I have some cookies in the oven. Hey, Beaver, if that Batson kid comes to the door while we're playing with the trains, we'll tell him they won't run. <laughs> Gee, that'd be a big lie. Well, we can pull the plug out, and that way we'll only be telling sort of a lie. <laughs> you mean you gave my train away to a girl just because she was pretty? Well, no, I didn't give them to her just because she was pretty. What'd she do, Wally? Knock you down and take them away from you? <laughs> now look, Gilbert, you shut up. You can't tell me to shut up. I'm not in your family. James Beaver changed his mind about giving away his trains, and now he's blaming Wally because he gave them to the Batson girl when she came after them. And now Beaver's locked himself in the bathroom. Just like he used to when he was little. Yeah. Well, hello, Wally. Is he still locked in the bathroom? Yeah. Why don't we just all quietly move away from here and leave him there? <laughs> Wally, I don't think that's a very helpful suggestion. But, son, they were promised to Jimmy. Yeah, Dad. But I think I could work on you. I mean, talk you out of it and get it unagreed. But do you think Beaver was really serious about wanting an electric train for his birthday? <laughs> oh, it's hard to tell. But as you said, he's over at the Batsons now, and I don't think he's over there strictly as a technical advisor. <laughs> That's true. And yesterday, Wally was over at the Batsons. All of a sudden, that family's become very popular with our family. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 18, Beaver's Long Night. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Just that we agreed the next time we went out, Beaver was too old to have a babysitter. Well, uh, won't Wally be here? He has a basketball game tomorrow night. How would you like to have Gilbert spend the night with you tomorrow night? She did. That'd be neat. Gilbert, do you think it would be all right with your parents? Oh, yes, Miss Cleaver. My mother says she likes to have me out of the house over the weekend so she can have company without getting a headache. That's the dullest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> me too. It was kind of neat in the beginning, though, when those two gangsters drove up in front of the apartment house and they were waiting for that guy to come out so they could croak him. Hey, how about this thing? Why don't you wear that when Wally comes home and we'll scare the socks off of him? Yeah, he'll flip. Yes, ma'am. It's an emergency. Hello, police station? Well, you see, there's a suspicious-looking car out in front of our house with two men in it. Me? Uh, Mr. Cleaver. Boy. Wasn't it neat the way the police grabbed those crooks? Yeah, but it would have been neater if they'd started shooting. Lumpy showed up yet? No, Wally, but there were two guys out in the car. Oh, yeah, Lumpy's gonna have Bill with him. We're going to a masquerade. Yeah, well, so me and Gilbert called the... 
Masquerade? <laughs> That's where they wear funny clothes and masks and stuff, isn't it? Burr. Maybe you better tell them what we did to Lumpy and Bill. No, BV can't. Why not? Well, what are you gonna say, Wally? We just had the police throw your two friends in jail? Yeah, I guess it's not as good an idea as I thought it was. The police told me you called them. The police? <laughs> Uh, look, Fred, I just came in the front door. I haven't the faintest idea what... Ward, if you object to my boy coming around your house, you could call me direct, not sick the lawn. Any idea who it might have been or who might know what happened? Yeah, I, uh, I think so. You mean it... You think it might be your brother, Beaver? Well, yeah, that, that was the brother that I was thinking of. We figured they were gangsters and they were going to croak us. And so he called the police. And you used my name. Yeah, and it worked pretty good, Mr. Cleaver. They can whiz him right out here. And I'd apologize to Mr. Rutherford and then to Lumpy. Then I'd apologize to Mr. Scott and Bill. You didn't cry, did you? No. Last year I would have cried. But now I figured I was too old for that sort of stuff to work. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 19, Beaver's Jacket. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Rich, that's really neat. Yeah, it's too big for me, but my mom says I'll grow into it. <laughs> my mother always says that, too. Only trouble is, by the time I grow into something, it's usually all worn out. It's beautiful. Isn't it, Ward? Yes, it's real keen. Show him a lock, Richard. Right here. Say, that's really something. Well, I'm just keeping baseball cards in it until I get some real valuables. <laughs> Dad, could I please have a jacket like that? Well, uh, isn't that your mother's department? Well... It costs a lot of money, so I figured you'd want to be in on it, too. How do I know you take care of it? See, Dad, I wouldn't take it around. I'd take care of it, honest. All right, son, I'll tell you what. I guess on Monday, uh, your mother can take you down and buy you one. Boy, Richard, losing your new jacket the second day you had it. That must practically be the world's record. <laughs> Look, both our jackets are exactly alike, so I figured I could go home with you and you could go upstairs and throw your jacket out the window to me, and I could wear it home. <laughs> Hi, Wally. You mean you don't have my jacket? Well, something kind of happened. What do you mean, something kind of happened? Well, my mom saw the spot on the sleeve last night and sent it to the cleaners. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's been nice knowing you guys. I got my jacket back at the Lost and Found today. Hey, that's neat. Yeah, I got it hit out in the garage. What do you get it out there for? Because my mom thinks my jacket's at the cleaners. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what am I going to do? What's that? <laughs> oh, gee, Dad, I, uh, I don't see anything. Well, of course you do. That jacket going up in the air there. <laughs> Very plain what he's been doing with it. Beaver lost his jacket, and he's been sneaking Richards in the house so we wouldn't know he lost it. Beaver, what a terrible thing to do. I know it's a terrible thing to do, Mom, but that's not what I've been doing. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I think we should just let the boys swap jackets on there all night. I wouldn't want any other parents to be as confused as I feel right now. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 20, Nobody Loves Me. Starring Barbara Billingsley. The awkward age. What's the awkward age? Well, that's when a kid gets clumsy and awkward and ugly and nobody likes him. Well, when does it happen? Well, all of a sudden you start shooting up and your clothes don't fit and your ears get too big for your face. He used to stop me on the street and want to hug him. So cute and cuddly at that age. Beaver, please don't breathe down my neck. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mom. I guess you don't think I'm cuddly either. <laughs> cuddly? Boy, Beaver, she's no better than to ask me a question like that. Well, then what am I? Look, Beaver, I'm your brother. I don't have the heart to tell you. <laughs> you march right back upstairs, young man, and put on a clean shirt. What if he does that? His dinner will get cold. Well, all right. But don't you come down to dinner again looking a mess. Yes, sir. <coughs> oh, Beaver. <laughs> they even like me anymore. Well, now, what would make you think a goofy thing like that? I'll tell you what. They didn't kiss me goodnight. Listen, Beaver. For a year now, you've been making a big deal about them kissing you goodnight. Well, I guess most kids do go through it. Through what? 
being repulsive. Repulsive? Hello, Miss Landers. Do you need any help? Why, it's Theodore, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Theodore Cleaver. Don't you remember him? I mean, me? Well, of course I do, Beaver. For Hi, Chief. I'm surprised at you. This here's your old friend, Beaver Cleaver. Hi, Chief. Don't you remember me? Ah, uh, Chief may forget a face, especially when it's up higher than it used to be. But he never forgets a smell. No. We don't love him. Did he tell you that? No, Wally did. It seems Beaver thinks that he's awkward and ugly and repulsive. Poor kid. When they get older, and, you know, get to be people, well, then you can like them as well as love them. And if they turn out the way you hope they will, you respect them. The way you hope they'll respect you. I know. I know, but uh, Harvey seems to be having trouble getting that point over to Johnny. I'm afraid that boy's just not very bright. Would you mind terribly if I kissed you? Oh, no, Mom. Go ahead. <laughs> if it'll make you feel better. <laughs>